whatever you want on your, your bag, your film, your pouch, whatever. This is where we make it. Welcome back to TTO Parts. It's time we talk about message creation for these VideoJet printers. Make sure you stick around to the end because I got a few tips and tricks on shift codes, how to make them possible on this printer. It's stuff they don't teach in the normal training. For the uninitiated, a message or a job, they kind of mean the same thing. I'm gonna switch back and forth while I'm talking. Don't hate me. It's a file that we create on the Clarisoft software. That's the message software that comes with these VideoJet printers. This file is gonna have all the information we wanna put on our bag. So it's gonna have the best by date, maybe a timestamp, lot number, shift code, who knows, whatever you want on your, your bag, your film, your pouch, whatever. This is where we make it. I decided that the best way to teach you all how to do this is by using a real life example. So I went to the pantry, grabbed a bag of pretzels and looked for a best by date. This is what we're gonna recreate. Let's break this down before we hop into Clarisoft software. That way we know exactly what we're looking for. All right, so breaking down that first line, we have a Best Buy date. Now this is gonna be a date with a built-in offset. So this thing says November 16th, 2024. Now I don't know the day this was manufactured. So we're gonna go ahead and guess that this offset is possibly 180 days. So 180 day off set and that's in the month 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 day day year 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 format okay now line two we've got h a o five one three one six and then a space and number two this h a o five one three one six looks like fixed text to me oh, i apologize for that beeping <clears throat> this HA051316 looks like some fixed text. So I'm going to say fixed text plus this two stands out to me because it's separated from the one six. So to me, that is signaling uh, possibly a shift code. So we're going to put shift code in here. And that's in the one, two or three. And then finally, that third line, we're just looking at a basic timestamp with no AM or PM, just a 24 hour. Now, if anyone knows this fixed text, uh, what that code actually is, go ahead and drop a comment below. Um, I know this is made by Snyder's. Snyder's has you know a million plants, so it could possibly be the HA051316 could just be a manufacturing plants location, right? So it could be the Goodyear Arizona plants stamp. Um, and that's how they would trace this bag. I have no idea. I'm just guessing, but this is kind of based on what I've seen in, in, the, uh, in the industry. Before we jump into making this message on our software, if you're finding any of this information valuable, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Starting up in Clarisoft, we're gonna to go to File, New, and here we're gonna pick our printer. Uh, I'm gonna pick a TT1000 53 millimeter printer. Then we're gonna to go to View, and I wanna zoom in. I'm gonna zoom in twice because I just like to be a little bit closer. And now it's really easy to see uh, on the top here, we've got a 53 millimeter margin, and down to the bottom, we got 75. 53 is the width of the ribbon, and the 75 is the length of its stroke, how far that uh, carriage will move. First thing we need to do is go grab a date. So we're gonna click date, drop it in there, double click on it, and we are gonna go to the format, hit the drop down, and look for one that we want. Uh, remember, we're month, 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 day, 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 year, year, year. All right, then we're gonna go to advanced. We're gonna get rid of the year, year, because I didn't see the formula I like. Um, and actually, I wanna get rid of the forward slashes as well, because that wasn't in the format. So we're gonna say, okay. Ah, I see I made a mistake, right? So we needed month, month, month. I only selected month, month. So let's go back into advanced, remove month, month, and then look for the three M's. Add that. And then we're gonna move him all the way up to the top. Check this format. That's much better. So we'll just throw him in the center. We have the format right, but we don't have an offset on here. So we're gonna give it a double click and we have to go to the date type 
Now there's a few different options. You can do user entered. So this would pop up a calendar. Uh, every time you select your job, a calendar, every time you select your job, a calendar would pop up and you would select the best by date. So I'll kind of have to do it by users. So I'm going to show you that. It didn't really change anything. Or we can do a calculated date. Now the calculated date, we're going to have to go to Calc Manager, and we're going to add a new calculation. And this will allow us to make a, a built-in offset on the unit itself. So we're going to call this 180 days. Again, I don't remember or I don't know their actual offset, so we're just guessing here. Um, go down to the bottom, and we have uh, the offset date. So we're, we have units of days, months, years, and we put 180 days in there. You could just as easily put six months in there. Nevertheless, we're going to put 180, change this back to days, and move on. Beautiful. So now we have the updated 180-day offset, and it's showing up on our, on our screen. All right, so next we're going to drop that fixed text in here. Remember, I was guessing at what it is. Um, there's a possibility it isn't fixed text, but based on everything I've seen, I'm going to just go ahead and move forward with this. If we were creating something with a customer, we would just update it when we got there once they told us the, the correct information. All right, and then we are going to do, we're going to go to time. We're going to drop our time in there. So remember, there was a timestamp on the third line. So we did skip that second line, but let's just get that timestamp in there and be done with it. Next, we're going to drop a text box in there for our shift code. Uh, and this is going to be a user entered text. Now, this is not the way I prefer to do this, but it is one method of getting a shift code on there. So our prompt is going to be shift code. Now, what this means, you know, we're going to add a fixed length. Uh, that way they can't write the incorrect shift code. Okay, I get this error because the default text preview has more characters than what I set. So we got to change that uh, just to a one. We'll move this in place. But like I was saying, I, I, this is not the ideal. Uh, every time the uh, every time this needs to be reset from shift to shift, somebody's going to have to go in here and change this. So I don't like that. It needs to be automatic. But anyways, we'll set this up. We'll get it looking real pretty. So we're just aligning everything right now. I'm going to move the shift code out. Get some spacing in there properly and so make it center. Beautiful. And now if you want to change font, it's pretty simple. Double click, go to the font tab and just increase the font by value. Uh, so we went from like a 10 to a 14 and we're just going to do that for every single one of them. We'll probably have to, uh, we're going to have to move everything again, but that's okay. We're going to do a file save as and call this test print. So let's show you the second way to do this, the correct way to do this. We're going to drop a timestamp in here, go down to our menu, and we're actually going to look for shift code. Now, it shows up as a B. Obviously, they were using a 1, 2, or 3. That's okay. We can fix this. Unfortunately, we can't fix it here. We need to get into Clarity Config to fix that. We'll show you that in a second, but let's just move everything around. Get it looking pretty. Update our font to match everything else. All right, then we're going to do another file save as. Instead of calling it uh, test label, we're just going to call it test label or test print to. Beautiful. Now, here's a trick. This is really important. Go to your print button. Make sure you have your USB plugged in, and we're going to go to print to file. And then from there, we're going to select our drop down, find our USB disk. We're going to, we're, then we're going to select current image and save it. Now, this is super important. We're going to do this for both of them. But why this is so important is this will properly save your file to your thumb drive with all your special fonts, if you have any, your special graphics, if you have any, and your special job information.
Here's an image of the USB drive after we've saved everything. So you can see now we have a folder in here called fonts, graphics, and jobs. If we select jobs, I got a million of them in there, but down at the bottom, we've got test print two and test print one. So that came over properly. Uh, let's just go back and I'll show you uh, the fonts folder and then the graphics folders. If we had any graphics like a JPEG, <clears throat> it would save in here and we'd be able to run that file properly. Switching over to Clarity Config. Now, if you haven't done this before, we have an awesome video for this. You can go and find it on YouTube. So we're gonna go down to imaging and we're gonna go to shift codes. Then we're gonna select number of shifts. We're gonna go down to the bottom left and hit our shift code configuration. It's gonna give us a pop-up window. Now in here, we need to set uh, the number of shifts. So we're gonna throw three in there. We're gonna change the title of it to one, two, and three. And after we do that, we're going to update the time. So the start of first shift is going to be 8 a.m. Uh, this thing doesn't want to work with me. So 8 a.m. Shift 2, we are going to set for 4 p.m. And then shift 3, uh, Midnight is perfect. So the final thing we have to do after we, sh uh, after we set the times is we need to tell it which days of the week this is gonna work. So we're gonna just gonna select every day of the week uh, just to cover all our bases. Even if they only run Monday through Friday, it doesn't matter, let's just ship, let's, <clears throat> let's just select every day. And then we say, okay. So now it's gonna download to the coder. I'm gonna get out of this. I'm gonna download it again, just to be safe. We have the files that we just created on the thumb drive. We're gonna go ahead and insert them. Once he's inserted, we are gonna go to the settings button and then we're gonna go to database and external. In here, we're gonna look for our files. Now I know I named them tests. So instead of looking through all these files that I have, I'm just gonna search for test. And I got test print. That's the first one. Yeah, we're gonna restore this. And then test print two. We're also gonna restore this. So the restore button looks like a thumb drive with an arrow pointing to a cabinet folder. And we hit that, he asked if you wanna restore it, say yes. We are gonna load the first test print file. So we're gonna to go to job. Again, I'm just gonna search, I've got a million jobs in here. Search for test. All right, so we're gonna go with number one. Now, if you remember this shift code was created with a user input. So what we expect to have happen is it asks us to enter our shift code here. So we're gonna press edit and we would have to look at you know the time of day and we would say, this is second shift. So go back, press two, say okay. That's the downside of user entered text. They've gotta change it when they, you know, when this shift's over. So when the next shift, <clears throat> when the next shift starts, they're gonna to have to swap this message around, right? So if we go to test preview, it's gonna say two until somebody goes back in there <clears throat> and changes it. And that would require them to go back in here, select test. Oh man, if I could type, select test. And select that again. And then this time they would come and say, well, now we're on third shift. So you see where this could be a problem. So we need to switch over to the other one. And that was number two, right? And what we did there was we built an automatic rollover with our shift code. Say, okay. So he's set up as two right now. So give you a preview. Okay, now let's do this. Let's go to our clock. So we're gonna go to settings, set up control date and time, and I'm just gonna change this. So it's set for nine o'clock p.m. Let's change it to 9 a.m. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the preview is the same, but if we go in here and we go back and reselect this, it'll update. Now, I know you're thinking to yourself, hey, those two are the same. You had to go back with the second one and, and change it after you change the clock. And that's true, but if I had my cassette here, which I don't, because I forgot it in my office, 
I apologize. Don't hate me. Drop a comment below and tell me how much of an idiot I am. Uh, if I had the cassette, I would just run a print and after it printed once, it would update the preview. Because I don't have the cassette, I can't do that, so I had to manually select it to update that preview. But trust me, this is the right way to do it. And again, we had to go through Clarity Config to get there. So it wasn't easy, and that's not something they always teach you. Thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you found some useful information in there. If you did, don't forget, thumbs up, subscribe. If you have any questions, remember, I'm only a phone call or an email away. So reach out to us anytime. We're here to help you. We'll catch you next time. Ciao.